we're going to look at some sizable U.S. cannabis markets, dive into about five markets, looking at Florida and New York, New Jersey, Virginia, and then Ohio, talking about uh, what your expectations should be in terms of sales, all coming up. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Forecast for Florida, you know, over the next three years, I guess, up until 2025, it's got a population of 16 million. So expecting to see some larger contributions from Florida. Um, It's got a handful of operators, still fairly small, got to deal with uh, the coast and the humidity, all those issues indoor only, which is going to be really expensive, but they're estimated to process around 1.3 billion in sales. Um, And I know one company is doing just about that on their own. So by 2025, it might be even more than that. Uh, They're expecting there should be about a 50% chance you're going to see an active adult use market in, I I mean, they're just going to see the money. And and I think that midterm in November uh, 2022, we're going to see the the House and the Senate flip to Republicans. Republicans are going to see that cash and they're definitely going to jump on board. I think you're going to see the Republican Party kind of holding on to cannabis um, and and trying to get some of that tax money out of Florida. Florida has been traditionally a um, more of a uh, Republican state. So um, factoring some of the headset estimates and increases in new consumers, they're expecting that uh, the Florida market could produce $3.2 billion in sales by 2025. So, I mean, like I said, there's a, a one company already that's doing about a billion dollars in sales. So I, I think that's completely reasonable. There's some other reports that um, have some more hyperbolic numbers, you know, new frontier data. I kind of have to take those reports with a grain of salt. Headsets spot on because they get all their information directly from retailers. Obviously, this being kind of a, a projection or, or a um, crystal ball, um, you know, expectations, you kind of have to figure that out. But Florida, second largest cannabis market in the U.S. behind California. So we anticipate that it's going to have some substantial sales and 3.2 billion is fairly conservative in my opinion. Moving on to New York. Um, New York, everyone in New York is like in their own bubble and they're like, we're going to be the biggest, the greatest, the best. Nope. I think California is going to be the biggest. I mean, it's the fifth largest GDP in the world. New York is not, right? So why uh, other than ego, all these people in New York are like, yes, we're going to be the best, the biggest. And it's um, it's kind of funny. Anytime I ask people like, hey, what's your expectation? Whatever industry they're in, they're like, this is going to be the biggest, the best, the whatever. Uh, some of these folks got to get out of their own bubble. Otherwise, they just kind of sound like, um, you know, uh, an echo chamber there. So, I mean, you can't deny it. One of the most exciting cannabis markets uh, in New York is going to be exciting to see, um, you know, what they're able to do. 15 million um, population, home to one of the most advanced illicit cannabis industries in the world, maybe. Um, Stop and frisk definitely wasn't wasn't the greatest thing for New Yorkers, so they definitely deserve some um, compensation and and, uh, deserve to, to change that a little bit. Medical cannabis in New York. High barriers for entry and operators, um, not very treated very fairly. So legislators allowed for the um, medical cannabis market in 2014, but it's been pretty, um, pretty stymied, pretty limited. But the potential for New York's cannabis market is, um, should be fairly large. So $2.8 billion in combined annual sales. I could definitely see that with a lot of, of tourism. New Jersey is going to be eating away at that, though. Um, they already do that with... Uh, Wall Street and trying to get people to come over. And so there's there's going to be, it'll be really interesting to see the sales and the discounts and, and what they try to do to get people to um, to go back and forth. So I think that'll be kind of interesting to, to watch that play out and grow. So regulators are trying to do this rapid um, expansion and, and try to mobilize the market as fast as they can. They've got uh, 7 million that they can potentially sell to. Uh, it's a limited license owned entirely by MSOs. Uh, not necessarily a great thing. Uh, 
but it will give them first mover advantages over New York if they're able to get that rolling out as fast as they can and, and beat some people to market. So expecting combined sales of 1.6 billion by 2025. Looking at Virginia, that could be definitely interesting. Some government agencies out there too. A lot of the alphabet soups are out there. Um, New Jersey expected to have a medical and adult use. Looking at uh, after only a year of having their medical markets, they were quick to kind of get that adult use. And so trying to, to boost that mid-Atlantic market up a little bit in the, in the Northeast and get some of that $1.3 in spending. Ohio, that was interesting. The Backstreet, one of the Backstreet Boys uh, was trying to be one of the only producers. I'm glad that got voted down. Very unfair law that only like five licenses would have been issued to Ohio. Uh, and it didn't work out. So they've kind of been one of the rare markets or a different market, I guess, because of, of its conservative nature and, and what happened with that limited license thing with Nick Lachey and all that uh, that happened. But predicting that Ohio is going to be a big market, 8.8 .8 billion users. It's huge. Um, so and especially with, you know, colleges, obviously, right? I would think that Massachusetts would be great for that. And it still hasn't, um, but the pandemic is, is kind of held that back. Ohio is hoping to be a top contender. They've got some um, campaigns going and medical market is growing. Um, so they, they might be busting at the seams like everybody else who uh, it underproduces, you know, and then you, you've got to wait another year or two for prices to come back down as, uh, supply and demand finally equals out. But by 2025, they're hoping to actually see that the Ohio market gets some combined sales about 1.6 billion, uh, slightly more than New Jersey. So that'll be all interesting. I have to come back to Talking Hedge and find out. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.